Yeah, what is up YouTube? I'm Blitz5 and today I'm going to be going over the brand new specializations in Battlefield 1. And right here we are on the Soldier tab in the Battlefield 1 menu on Xbox One. So you can peek all my stats here, but I'll skip that for now and get right into Customize Soldier so we can see these new specialization abilities. So as you can see on the bottom left here, there is a new tab below the melee section and this is called specializations. So let's click into that and kind of give a quick rundown of what's going on here. So as you can see, there's a total of nine specializations that are available for each class. The first three have already been unlocked and then the following four, I think it's four, quick on spot, bayonet trading, hasty retreat and inconspicuous are available for each class. So there's a total of seven standard special specializations across every single class. And then the bottom two are class specific for that class. At least that's my understanding of this so far. We're going to go through, explain each one and see how they benefit each class and what's useful, what's not useful. So we'll start with assault. That's like the most basic class and we'll go from there. So let's just get these basic ones out of the way. First, we have Flak. Like I said, this is available to everybody as soon as you get the name in the name of the Czar update, which I'm assuming you would need to play online and you'll have this if you're playing Battlefield 1. So Flak is a very standard ability here for you know most games, and this is great if you're playing the objective. It's incoming suppression is reduced. I'm sorry, incoming damage from explosions is reduced by 10%. So like I said, if you're playing objectives a lot, this is really important so you don't get blown up on the point and you can take it, capture the flag, plant the bomb, etc., etc. Then we have cover, which I'm a little confused about because this says that incoming suppression is reduced by 25%. And when you suppress an enemy, say you have a heavy machine gun, you're putting down a lot of fire, you get suppression points because you're basically making it more difficult for the enemy team. They might have to stay in the cover. That's what suppression means. But when you're taking suppression, you're, you're not really taking damage. So I don't know what they're reducing by 25%. Maybe there's miss, um, missing something there. If you know what I'm missing, please leave it down in the comments below. If not, we'll keep moving on. The next we have quick regen, which decreased time before out of combat heal by 20%, which I think this along with flak are the two best out of these three first uh, specializations. This is like, you know, when you're down to a lot of health, there's a lot of situations where I only have like 10 or 15% of my health left and I'm about to die and I have to stand behind a rock and I have to just kind of sit there until my health starts to reload because it kind of determines like, all right, it's safe now, blah, blah, blah. And then it your health goes back up. And it takes a little while for this to do this and you're kind of just sitting there not in the action. So the fact that this decreases this by one fifth of a time is nice. And I'll probably be using this first along with Flak as soon as I hop into a game here. Um, then next, the next four that you have to unlock but that are for every single class are Quick Unspot. Uh, well, this is the first one. And this is decrease length of time. You are spotted by two seconds, which is huge. I say to a lot of people when I'm helping them with Battlefield 1 or just talking about the game or trying to get better, that in Battlefield 1 as opposed to like Call of Duty, it's really important to mark people before you shoot them because there's a chance they might get away uh, or something happens and your team can get the kill or you get the assist. When like in Call of Duty, it's usually whoever has the first reaction time wins the battle. In Battlefield 1, I feel like it's really important to mark people so you can kind of just use your team and get more kills be a little bit more objective based so this is a good way to counter that strategy um, which is nice and this is an interesting system that they're putting into place here then next we have bayonet training which bayonet charge lasts one second longer and recovers one second quicker so the recovery there is huge i know a lot of people who bayonet after you do it you're kind of just stuck there with your bayonet up your ass so if you like to bayonet a lot this is definitely up your alley then we have Hasty Retreat, which is increases maximum sprint speed whilst suppressed by 10%. I like the use of whilst there. And again, this is more useful to me than the cover one because while you're being suppressed, that means you're being shot at. So then you are 10% faster at GTFOing out of there, getting that F out, if you know what I mean. Then finally, we have Inconspicuous, which is the last specialization available for each class. And this is when stationary or moving slowly, you are invisible to spot flares. And after reading this, I was like, man, for the first time, this has to be one of the best ones because flare is so important in Battlefield 1. Not being spotted, kind of being out of the mini map is so nice. It's so helpful. So I, I think a lot of people will take this. This is huge. And it's going to be um, pretty enticing not to take it once I unlock it. Then now on to assault, the moment we've all been waiting for a specialization. Just kidding, but on to the class specific specializations. How many times are you gonna say specializations in one video? The most times. 
So we're on to Juggernaut. So your gas mask also reduces explosive damage by 20%, does stack. So let's read that again. Your gas mask also reduces explosive damage and this saying it stacks means it stacks with, I was gonna say flak, but if you can only take one, then I don't know how that works. Maybe you'll be able to take more than one of these. That would be pretty cool and then that would stack with flak, just potential um, thing there. I could see them allowing you to take more than one. I don't know that as of right now. Then the last perk available for Assault is Control Demolition, is, and this is your dynamite will now detonate sequentially. Oh, so you can put down more than one dynamite and then be like, um, let me detonate the first one, boom, boom, let me detonate the second one, boom, let me detonate the third one. Interesting. I don't know how beneficial that will be in Battlefield 1. It would take a lot of planning and waiting for that to be super useful. So uh, I'm going to say I like the Juggernaut inconspicuous and quick regen and flak the most. So on to medic, let's check out the bottom two medic specializations. Like I said, I'm gonna skip all the other ones. We already did those. So the first unique one to medic is called concealed rescue. And this is down squad mates within 20 meters, drop smoke to cover their revival, 40 second cooldown. I think that's awesome. I've recently discovered after like months and months of playing Battlefield 1 that smoke is so useful in this game because it, it's really the only thing that can protect you if there's not like a building in the way. So if you, there's people out in, the, in the open, this is a huge way to save them, revive it, and not get killed during the process. So that's awesome. Then next we have Stimulant Syringe, and this is after reviving the alley, you both gain a 20% boost in sprint speed for eight seconds. Okay, I think these medic ones are to me, seem a lot better reading them than the assault ones, at least for right now. I, I feel like use, using either of these would be super helpful and the immediate effect would be the stimulant syringe would be beneficial in almost every situation when you'd have to kind of plan out the concealed rescue a bit more. So let's move on to support. Nice, nice mask there. Going to a uh, masquerade ball. Let's go down. So we have the first support specific Specialization, almost a tongue twister there. This is called Unbreakable. This is incoming suppression is reduced by 75% when your bipod is deployed. So I'm gonna guess that like suppression must mean like the shake that you flinch that you have or something like that when you're getting shot at because you still get flinched when you have like the bipod. So I'm, I'm gonna assume that's what it is. Uh, again, because I don't understand this whole uh, reducing suppression, this doesn't have a huge impact to me, but I've been wrong in the past with this kind of stuff in Battlefield. So then the second and final specialization for support is called pin down. And this is the duration an enemy remains spotted is extended via your suppression. Interesting. So if you're putting down fire, it basically puts people on the map, but they have to already be spotted out. So right now, medic to me is seeming like they have the most immediate effect and most beneficial uh, specializations. Let's go on to scout and hope there's something a little bit more interesting here. So let's go down. We have scapegoat and this is a decoy is automatically deployed when struck below 45 health by a distant enemy. So this is hilarious that you're just dropping a random decoy, but if you have this on, uh, well, okay, it's, it's saying by a distant enemy. So it's not gonna drop when you're getting shot by someone with an SMG. Um, it depends where it drops it. If it's right in front of you, then I guess this is beneficial. If it's not, then I really don't see the point of this at all. But um, I guess, you know what? Actually, if you're in a window, really long distance, you go below 45% health, it's gonna make it look like you're still in the window and it will buy you some time to maybe get into a different window, reposition and counter snipe. So in that situation, if that's how it works out, then that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I don't see how that's useful. Then we have Perimeter alarm and enemies within 15 meters of your trigger trap mines are marked on the mini map. I think this is sick because as a sniper, I play scout a lot. You usually use your um, trip mines as kind of like, or at least I do, as a way to detect if someone's coming flanking you. So say you're sniping forward and there's maybe two paths, like one to the left and one to the right of you. You might put a trip mine to the left and then you're constantly checking straight into the right. So then you have the left straight into the right all covered and you're hoping that no one comes from behind if you're a sniper and you're in, in a good position. So what's nice about this is if the team is coming around left, you know they're coming when your mine is triggered, but you don't know how many people, you don't know exactly where they are. So this will help that a lot. So I will definitely be using this pretty much at all times when I'm a sniper as opposed to scapegoat. 
Then finally we have, is that it? Oh, we did that. Assault, Medic, Support, and Scout. I forgot in Battlefield 1, obviously there's only four classes. Usually I feel like there's five because you have like an Engineer, but that's not in this game. So that is it. So there's only one, two, three, four times two. There's only eight class specific specializations. Then other than that, there's the additional seven. So everyone's going to have a choice of nine to use from. And we'll see if there's some kind of ability where you can use more than one. This is interesting that this is coming out. What is this? Almost a year into Battlefield 1 coming out. I guess it's like 11 months. I feel like Battlefield 1 came out at the end of October last year. Um, this is the kind of stuff that, in honesty, Battlefield 1 should have been launching with because it's 2017 and Battlefield 1's been fought, Battlefield's been following the same kind of recipe with class setup, like no ranked. Uh, class setup is exactly the same. Matchmaking is the same. So uh, it's kind of... A bummer that we've had to wait this long for like new class setup and more intricate class stuff more ca customization and, and stuff to counter uh gameplay but in reality it's nice that it's finally here and that battlefield one is developing this much stuff late into the game and not just putting out like fake updates like oh here's a new winter map and that's it they're actually putting in real time and real updates a real consideration real thought into the game um which is great and also, in future Battlefields, hopefully, they'll have all of this stuff and it will just be better going forward for the community. So, big props up again to Battlefield 1 and DICE. This is an awesome update a year into the game. Can't wait to try this out, unlock everything, and eventually uh, probably make a video about um, the reality of these things. So, a lot of times when you read these perks, you're like, uh, this sounds shitty, but then using the game, you're like, wow, that's OP. Or like when it gets comboed with something or stacked, it becomes a really strong combination. So, anyways, we'll see when that happens. Uh, check back to my page. As always, I'm Blitz5. Thank you all for watching and peace out.